<clears throat> um, hello, everyone. My name is S.Y. Lim, and I'm the Director of Programming at Mana Contemporary Chicago. Uh, thank you so much for joining our Open Book program. Today, we have Sahan Hashmati Afshar and Amiriel Hegazi, and they will be presenting Mabu Bay. Um, Sahan will introduce Mabu Bay and read a few poems from the artist book. Then he would continue with the book's content by presenting images and constructions of the poem. Amira Hagazi will talk about the printing process of Mabu Bay and how different printing techniques have made this book. Sahan Hashmati Afshar is a multidisciplinary artist from Iran living in the US. Sahan graduated with the Master of Fine Arts in Studio from the School of the Art Institute of Chicago and a Bachelor of Science degree in Pure Mathematics from Shahid Beheshti University, Tehran, Iran. He has been a member of the Association of Iranian Painters since 2018. Amira Hagazi is a multimedia artist working between drawing, printmaking, publishing, and scholarly media. She currently lives in Chicago, Illinois, where she teaches at Columbia College Chicago and is a research fellow at the Design Museum of Chicago, focusing on design history and typography of Chicago. A uh, longer bio and a short description um, is listed on manacontemporary.com and munirfoundation.org. This program has been made possible with the support of Munir Foundation. Please welcome Sahan and Amira. Thank you so much, SY. Uh, I want to first thank <clears throat> Munir Foundation and Mana Contemporary, especially SY, for making this time and facilitating this Zoom meeting. Uh, now I'm going to share my screen so that we can dive into the presentation. OK. Mahbube is an artist book that earns a collection of narratives from touching a plant to Asian history, from tablets to amputated bodies after an explosion. This autoethnographic collection stages my experience of being interrogated by the U.S. Department of Homeland Security, USDHS in poems, images, and essay. Via various printing methods and materials, Mahbube lands a plant, an archive of tablets, and a profiling tool in counterterrorism studies. The poems are apostrophe constraint writing that perform the phases of the interrogation by USDHS in Farsi and English. This book has been a long time in the making and has benefited immensely from critical feedback of people I dearly trust. Irene Vasner has been reading Mahube from its initial drafts and helping me to shape this work. She designed the layout of the text images and created the map of the poems. Amira Hejazi brought the design to life by making this book. Her suggestion varied from printmaking processes to making this book. Mohammad Atari and Armine Hayropetian's insightful comments expanded my thoughts. Sydney Golden's careful editing of the English part and Pegal Pasolar's critical comments and edits in Farsi part led to substantial revision. In the end, Mehdi Ebrahimi thoroughly read and made the last marks on the text. Michelle Grabner has supported this book by publishing this collaborative work in the Proofarm Press. The result is the current book, which bears equally the stamp of each of us and our limitations. This book is printed in Spotnik in Chicago and Color Art Institute in Berkeley. Mahbube, beloved in Farsi, is a tox toxic, fragrant plant that cultivates on Iran's Asian history, a terrorist attack in Jerusalem, and the interrogation by USDHS slash ICE. Mahbube is Mahbube Shab, or Sestron Parki, an assemblage that plays as a stand-in in the poems and images of this book. Mahbube Shab has a binomial name, Sestron Nocturnal, 
This plant as an ornamental plant for its yellow flowers that are heavily perfumed at night is called night blooming jasmine, night scented cestrum or poison berry. Relative to Cestrum noctrum, Cestrum parkii is a green shrub that grows three meters tall in humid areas such as riverbanks, canals, and remnant bushland. Because of its persuasive regrowth and seed lifespan, Cestrum parkii is extremely difficult to control. This plant marks its habitat by its distribution, odor, and toxicity. Cestrum parkii competes vigorously with other vegetations and vegetarians. A physical contact with any part of the plant would cause nerve impulses from the mouth, stomach, intestinal tract to the anus. Consequating vomiting, if not death, with the mentioned biological qualities, I have written the first poem, Sestrum Parki or Mahbubesha. 846 with a cold breeze, 41 degree, 52 minute, 51.0 seconds north, 87 degree, 37 minute, 21.3 seconds west on Mott. I saw only the Mahubeshap species near the train station. There was a plane of them, tall shrub about three meters with attractive odor, apparently taken all the last night. Little by little, its habitat has become more lucid. Mahbubeh's order took me with three questions, three meter long, three questions. In the first question, they asked my opinion about the following image. Mahbubeh is a reconstruction of a book that US Homeland Security agent showed me on November 21st, 2019 in Chicago, titled Islamic Iranian Art and Architecture. I want to pause a little bit about uh, this presentation and talk about the interrogation that happened in November 21st, 2019. Um, I was walking downtown Chicago and um, I was actually going to TA for a class in uh, SAIC that uh, a person approached me and asked me um, if I'm Sahant Eshmati Afshar. And then after a while, he asked me some questions. Uh, one of them was about what I think about culture in the United States. And the other was uh, a book that he had with him. So he brought it out of his bag and uh, he asked me to take a look at it and tell my opinion. I didn't accept it and I, I refused to touch it. So, and uh, I answer all of the questions as like, I'm the student here and you should ask the international affairs. And uh, the whole interrogation uh, lasted around like 10 minutes. It was like 8.46 in, uh, in downtown Chicago. Lots of the content in the books are dealing with the time and location since I was shocked by the ways in which the agent found me. Temporal region is, is a term that used throughout the book. This ontological term accentuates itself in many parts of the poems and counter lines in print. The overall theme in the book is related to my experience with the book that agent showed me and asked me to take a look at it. Thinking about my fingerprints, I didn't accept touching with the agent was what agent was offering, meaning the book. This prestige of the book has employed various printing techniques to imply the refusal to touch of the book. The, this book is in an acrylic box with an engraving of a toxic plant the green fluorescent acrylic on black velvet folk book cloth bears a bright glow around the whole punch touches of holder's hand. Never dying ink in the risograph captures the reader's touch throughout the book. In the next poem, Kiss, I'm, uh, I'm concerned with the agent's book. I have spaced out this tension around the book during the encounter by three counts of leaves, cilia of lips, and the lower lip, which prints touching the Sestrum Parkey. 
2246, 41 degree, 47 minute, 21.5 seconds north, 87 degree, 35 minute, 52.5 seconds west in the green space, near the circular fountain. They are not Mahbube, Mahbube is appointed. On cut ornamental grass, they were doing hurdles. Sometimes while irrigation, they sit beside me and put their muddy feet in the water. They had three tattoos inside of their lower lip. I remember they kept the silly of the lower lip on my face. They kept a distance so that their eyelashes did scratches on my right cheek. They ought to possess life healing. Eyes are closing in four frames in the duration of 0 0.1 millimeter before the touch in the touched area. Four fingerprints without the thumb. Locally, they are hollows and corpus were engraved on mud. Adhere to the pages of the book, the letterpress prints are cartographies between states of familiarity of topics such as Islamic, Iranian, art, and architecture. They posit visual language through what is idiosyncratic and somewhat legible about my cultural histories. These tablet prints locate cultural heritage. With custom charcoal ink, the letterpress prints are front end of charcoal rubbing of an archive of tablets called Persepolis Portification Archive, PFA. The clay tablets have recorded the administrative transaction in ancient Iran. They are a mere record of distribution, storage, and outlay of food. The Asian engravings are the visual critics of the prints. Excavated and shipped from Iran to Chicago in 1934, the clay tablets of PFA is a subject of the poems in the book. In ways in which notions of Ibrahimic slash Islamic perception of body and shaping clay. The poem tablet binds PFA to the body and a plantation of Mahbubit. 846, 1934. 29 degree, 56 minute, 07.4 minutes north, 52 degree, 53 minutes, 21.3 seconds east in the basement. Clay tablets constrained by the fire with paraffin eluded with charcoal has been candled. Coordinates of these candle weeks were in the gene of the map of it. One, the burnt bonds. Two, the back street of charcoal. Three, cultural souvenir for remembered shadows. Mahbubeh had rise in tablets, order of them in their lovemaking, from the trichomes to the cilia of all of their yellow flowers with their little finger, touch me nausea. In 2008, this archive became a legal issue in the United States of America due to terrorist attack in Jerusalem. The terrorist attack happened in Ben Yohado Bazaar in September 4, 1997. On that day, three suicide bombers entered the mall in downtown Jerusalem and detonated bombs. This attack is the subject of fourth poem, Death. This poem is a reminiscent to this terrorist attack where the homogeneity and connectedness of body parts are locally amputated and scattered body mass. This book, Mahbube, has a map printed in silk screen on paper that lay, lay out the poems and visual components of the images in this book as a blueprint. The legend of the map illustrate the initial letters of the poems. The letters represent the stages of interrogation and what I went through. If the ideas are Mahbube and the USDHS agent is a general actor, the thin finite countable set of permutations such as colorless green Mahbube sleep furiously or furiously sleep Mahbube green colorless, the probabilities of poems grammatical structures are concrete. I was there, I'm still there sometimes. Despite being sound or complete, sensical or modeled, poetic or literal, the binary assignments of the phrases or these words in such combinations 
presupposes economical power of counterfactual space and alienation from my personal registration bound to Markov chain. What if, what if, three dot, and what if not paranoid? Probably Mahbub's content embeds partially in a modal logic. Media's rest of counterparts as an associated members. After some months, a chart of the future from spine to narrative to blueprint to map to blueprint to narrative to spine, I have registered my poems with computational letters. Pondering on the reason of being interrogated, I have framed the poems by employing basic formal ontology, BFO, borrowed from counterterrorism studies. This applied ontology structures data for programs on the level of ComStat and enables intelligence services to identify and track terrorist groups and criminals. By applying BFO, the first poem of the book restages the phases of the interrogation in the context of an apostrophe writing with Cestron Parkey. In Cestron Parkey or Mahbub Shab, I have implemented Cestron Parkey's continuance, focusing on its toxicity into the phases of the interrogation. In other words, I have classified the accurate process and phases of the day of interrogation and replaced the qualities of the agents with Cestron Parkey. The following diagram illustrates the structures of the poem. So basically what you see here, I'm using BFO, basic formal ontology, and like I'm trying to make the first poem. And the first poem is called uh, Sestrum Parki or Mahbu Besha. On the left, it's the continuant, which is, it doesn't change over time. It's like a qualities of the entity. In here, the entity is Sestrum Parki. And as you see, I, I'm like putting uh, biological qualities of this plant. And on the right, Mahbu Besha, uh, I'm putting the accurate, what happened. Uh, and like, uh, so it has like temporal regions of time and location. And then I'm combining these two to make the first poem. And the initial letters in the poem, A, B, C, D, T, O, L, is actually the plot of the narrative. So it's like temporal region, and then we go to social, uh, spatial temporal region, and then we have the character, and then sight, and then I'm asking three questions. So basically, the plot is it's identical to the interrogation that I went through. Um, and here we have the poem. A, 846, with a cold breeze. B, 41 degree 52 minute 51.0 seconds north, 87 degree 37 minute 21.3 seconds west, on mud. B, I saw only the Mahmoubash Shab species near the train station. B, there was a plane of them. C, tall shrub, about 3 meters. C, with attractive odor. D, apparently taken all the last night. D, little by little. Its habitat has become more lucid. E. Mahbubah's odor took me with three questions. E. Three meter long three questions. F. In the first question, they asked my opinion about F. The following image. F. Image. F. I have forgotten the second question. F. And the third, they asked me to snuggle their left leaves. G. I remember their leaves trichomes. H. While touching their leaves, I smelled methane. H. All of the love making attracted me. H. Swooned by their beauty, and vanity silenced me. I. From inside to outside, with all the lovemaking, I vomited. J. 2246. K. I was on my knee and my fingerprint stayed on the mud. L. Demarcation of Mahmoud site is not easy. L. They put other species around Sestrum Parkley. L. To prevent their spread. I believe Mahmoud is not alone. Through my investigations of USDHS slash ICE interrogative methods, I've come to understand that the book the agent had with him, which I only remember its cyan spine with the title of Islamic Iranian Art and Architecture, is an object among many. I refer these pointed or design objects, 
object of interrogation. In my experience with USDHS, the object of interrogation was a book with coordinates of Chicago, 8.46 a.m., November 21st, 2019, between the modern wing of Art Institute of Chicago's entrance and under the Nicholas Bridgeway. The agent three question, Cyan Spine, the book's title, Islamic Iranian Art and Architecture, the publisher of the book, The U.S. Navy. And the coordinates was 41 degree, 52 minutes and 51.0 seconds north and the, the rest. I have replaced object of the interrogation with Mahbube, creating a stand-in that has allowed me to understand the events of that day. Couple of months after the interrogation in spring of 2020, when ICE activity was high during Black Lives Matter, I started writing about my drawings, thinking through the tension of social participation and fear of being captured in that moment I decided to use drawing and writing to visualize and hear what I was going through in the beginning of pandemic. From imaginative geography and its representation in a chapter of Edward Said's Orientalism to the imagine, imagination battle of poetry is not a luxury by Audre Lorde, the drawing initially came very impulsive and became therapeutic as I was studying Persepolis Fortification Archive. I was walking through juxtapositions by associated logic within histories of the tablets. Mimicking the surface and border of the tablets as a linear closure, these hard edge abstractions are formal inventions to sync with the rupture of my appointed cultural identities. By using charcoal, I was softening my traumatic self with colonial histories of the tablets and personal narratives to find the third space if homie Baba will. At early stages of the drawing, when I was writing about them in descriptive mood, I had a studio visit with Amira Hejazi. During our conversation, she suggested articulating the drawings and writing in a book format, which later on, which later on became the reconstruction of the book that I encountered in November 2019. I want to uh, ask Amira to continue the presentation uh, and generously share the creative process of making this book. Thank you, Sahan. Uh, thank you for that. And thank you, SY and Munira Foundation. Um, yeah, so I showed up at Sahan's studio. At this moment, we were living in a lot of uncertainty a lot of loss. I went to his house to sit with him as he was grieving the loss of, of someone that he loved. Um, COVID was happening. We were alone. We were looking for a lot in our lives. And I think together, looking at this work in Sahan's studio, he showed me the poems, showed me the images. And I make books. so. Obviously my first thought was, well, this, this is a book. You're making a book. You don't, you don't know that you're making a book, but that's what, that's what this is, Sahand. And he's like, oh, oh, really? Really, I'm making a book. Um, he sat with that for about a week and a half and then called me up and was like, Amira, I think you're right. I think this is a book. Let's talk about this book. And through that, we were able to think about and see these objects in a way allowed for more intimacy. For me, books are intimate objects. We hold them. Sometimes we fall asleep with them in our arms. We memorize them. We know them by their fronts, their spines, their backs, their insides. There's very few objects that we know like this in our lives, that we touch like this in our lives, and that live with us. And this story that Sahan told me and the works that he was thinking of, I think deserved that treatment. This way that he was feeling rejected should be met with love, should be met with intimacy. So from loss, his loss, and for me, a lot of loss as well, we built something. 
our process was a lot of transformation, a lot of consideration. And we first started with this initial prototype. In this process, we were a little bit quick. We were trying to create very, very quickly um, to help Sahanj in his process of immigration. And honestly, because there was a lot of desperation in this moment. Sahanj and I were in graduate school together. And I think we were pretty aware of the, the potential and eventual loss of a lot of resources and support at the time. So within that, we were working to create very, very quickly. This initial prototype has a box. The book sat inside of the box. There's a window to look in and through Mahbube. And then inside we have some of the same content. It later changed into the final book. And on the inside of the box, you can see here, there was another hidden compartment. That hidden compartment housed the map. So it's not too far from what we have today, but this initially wasn't going to be the full edition. Sahand and I, in our sort of desperation to create, in our energy to make this book, decided that we wanted to very quickly print one edition. And we were going to call that the immigration edition. It was going to be quite cheap, uh, very cheaply produced. Um, and then this was going to be a deluxe edition. You'll notice that this box doesn't have a lid on it. Our initial idea was to have a sculptural object, much like the ones that Sahan showed you from his studio um, at the end of when he was talking. Uh, and that would have pushed down on the book and sort of closed the box. At a certain point, the school closed, the Art Institute closed, a lot of our resources were gone, all of the printing studios were closed. I bought my own presses. Um, I bought sort of a, a high-end Epson printer to be able to print this book and we had to reassess. This is me in my studio. I had blonde hair a million years ago, it feels like. So in isolation, I was working in this studio on this book. Sahand at this point actually moved across the street from me and would come over and we would sit in my dining room, which was also my living room, Chicago. Um, we would sit in there and work on the book together. So this book became not just something that we were making a project, it became a way that that we found community. It became a way for us to connect with one another in isolation, to think together in isolation and to grow, grow together as well. I was making bread, much like a lot of people. Um, and thinking about how you work together, how you're responsible together. Sahand and I produced deadlines. We had a lot of conversations, lots of brainstorming about what we were doing, what mattered. Is this book in Farsi? Is this book in English? Is this book in both? How do we organize it? How do we think about the object as a symbol and an object simultaneously? How can a book be intimate and rare? Uh, how can we invite people to touch it, but also make them wary of touching it? This is when I learned a lot about his experience um, with the ICE officer, the USDHS uh, officer in the interrogation and started thinking a lot about how do we, how do we embed the tactility into the printing process and then for the reader into their process of reading. So Sahan talked to at one point about the Resograph ink not drying. Resograph is a has soy-based ink, so it actually it, it'll just never dry. That's just part of part of what it is. And in the book, you, you can't necessarily tell that that's happening. You don't know unless you really, really know. Um, but still, honestly, it doesn't look very different and you touch it and then on the next page the ink will have come off on your finger and then will pause it itself on the next page so we were thinking about ways to to enact to 
in some ways make you culpable in that process, um, include you in understanding by experiencing the interrogation simultaneously through the actual usage and material poetics. Sahan and I were working simultaneously together and separately. Um, this is a little note Sahan wrote to me. Um, <laughs> he, he was gluing some of the spines into the book. I had taught him some minor bookmaking processes. So just so that we could be working simultaneously to get this book out uh, as quickly as we could. And he would sometimes leave me small notes uh, to help me in what I was doing. I, on the other hand, had a new studio at this point at Monet Contemporary and was doing some of the more heavy lifting uh, bookmaking. So printing everything, binding everything, and then collecting all of the things from Sahan. Uh, what you're looking at here is, I think it's one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, five books uh, that are being sewn onto a synthetic tape. This is how case bound, so like hardcover books are sewn and then they are glued into a hardcover case. Thankfully I could sew them all together and then cut them afterward. At some points we, we had major difficulties because of the pandemic, because of what we were trying to do, because we were in transition and from our planning to our implementation, we had a lot of shifting. So what, what do we have resources for? What are we uh, able to use? What can we get our hands on in the city? Our friends are moving, so you know there's that as well. Uh, spaces are closing. We had to very quickly get a hot foil press at one point because the hot foil press that we were going to use didn't work anymore. And the studio at Spudnik, actually, they got, they got rid of theirs. So in this way, we were constantly adapting with each other, trying to make this book exactly what we wanted it to be, but giving ourselves space to, to fail and to learn simultaneously. As Sahan said at the beginning, this, this book bears the limitations of each of us and ourselves. And I'm going to go out on a limb and say the, the city uh, and our community at large. Art, I think at this point, became a responsibility. It became much more, much more than a thing we were making because we are artists and we make things. For me, this book was about helping Sahan to tell his story, to amplify his story, to give him the ability to have this on his resume, to have this in his visa application, um, and to, as well as I could, and as quickly as I could, do this so that my friend could stay in this country. Honestly, it's about love. For me, this process is about care. It's about caring for him. It's about him caring for me. It's about us working together to create something and build something in beauty and love and protest often. These are just some of the initial notes from our first meeting. You can see, I think, October 26, 2020, or I think this was our initial planning meeting. Sahan was already working with Irene at this point, doing a lot of the, the design of the text itself. And then on the right-hand side, you can see that's half of the edition. The edition is uh, 30, 30 books total finally finished two years later. Um, and for this, I'm thankful. And, and there's a lot more about the printing process I could go into and in, in the ways in which we made our own ink for letterpress printing. We decided to print the tablets on separate pages so that they became artifacts, so that they acted as separate entities as well. But I'd like to finish here um, and open the space for questions. Uh, for Sahan and I, if anyone has anything. Thank you, Sahan and um, Amiria. Um, if you guys have any questions, please um, either drop it in the chat or if you guys want to speak to them, um, I can unmute you guys. So please let us know.
I have a question. Oh, actually, um, regarding the like the bright green yellow casing for the completed um, the like the, the most recent edition, I would love to hear how um, you guys uh, kind of came to that like the bright green and yellow, and also how that was produced. Sohan, do you want to talk about that? Yeah. Uh, so. As, as we talked about it, like um, lots of the book has the theme of like the touch and like the touching and the fingerprints. So I was thinking about like these biometric machines in the airport when you come to the, especially like a new country, like they will ask you to like have the prints, uh, your fingerprints there. So like in that um, uh, machines, they kind of light a green light in the fingerprint. So the combination of like fluorescent uh, green uh, acrylic sheet and the black velvet book cloth kind of um, is inspired by there. Uh, so it's it's not yellow, like maybe like the images are showing it in a yellow way, but it's green, uh, it's fluorescent green. Uh, I made them in uh, Peterson Brothers in Chicago. Um, and they did the laser etching, they say. Uh, so it's laser etching, and they also make the book, uh, like, like the box. Thank you. You're welcome. So we have a question in the chat. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm interested in the way Sand's mathematical background informed the logic of the book and the poetry. There seems an emotional distancing or capacity that the logic provides. Can you talk about one? Um, for sure. Um, like I was thinking about like what is the frame of these poems because the poems that I wrote was initially started from me uh, writing about the drawings and they were very idiosyncratic and personal. It was therapeutic for sure. And I was thinking about like the ways in which the book that the agent had with him, what type of technologies or like what how the content of that book has been edited. And I'm saying this because I didn't see the inside of the book. So I was thinking about like different castings that the agent presupposes on me, like first being from Iran and being male, like probably a terrorist uh, or like being having that tension. And it wasn't just that incident, like since I came to the US, I had many multiple kind of occasions that I felt that casting on me. So that was one thing. And then I was like, as you said, my I have a background in mathematics, so like I'm interested in logic and ontologies in general. Um, so I was thinking about like how can I edit and compile and also like assemble these writings that I had. So I studied like uh, this ontology that is being used is actually applied ontology, and then uh, like edited that uh, poems kind of playing. Uh, a devil's advocate, you, if you like, as like how I would be casted through these ontologies and me as like the writer of the poems. And uh, I think the medium between mathematics and art in writing that I am practicing, it's uh, constraint writing, uh, which I can reference to Olipo, uh, like in around like 70s, in this kind of very Eurocentric kind of approach to machine and like how they produce text. And what I'm doing is that like I'm using that reference point and instead of using that the schema as an author, I'm using a, a technology that exists and they use it. So like that's the kind of like the way that I'm connecting my interests in that formal logics or like that modern ideas and sciences to uh, my own uh, writing. I don't know if I have that. Oh, okay, good. If you have any other questions, ask me.
Do we have any more questions? Hi, Sahan. Uh, Hello. Thank you so much for this. I am so excited for, for this publication. Um, I wanted to ask, when are you finally convinced that this logic in ontology works and that this logic is not only appropriate because it's it's also a poetic interpolation, right? But when do you consider it done and a, and a good correlation to 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 really translate um, your experience to to this logic? When do you stop? Are you asking about like uh, the editing process? It's like me having the poems and then employing the ontology and like where that kind of like um, fabric is done. Are you asking that? Yes. Okay. Um, I think I went back and forth a lot because I had the uh, poems initially in the different forms, uh, in different narratives or different structure. And then I was researching about this ontology. So like at some point they were both working together. So like uh, the ontology informed the poems and also poems became the content of that ontology. Uh, it's, it's difficult now to tell you that like when that dialogue between that raw structure of the ontology and my poems like got together um, in this form that we have it in the poem. Uh, but I think the key for me to get out of the loop of this dialogue was the interrogation itself. That's kind of like the interrogation is kind of the registration. So whenever the plot of the poems had that correlation with what actually happened, I would stop. But for sure, I will read it and read it and make it a little changes. But like, I mean, that that was the key to get out of that loop. Amazing. And also congratulations, Amira. I answered in the chat a question about um, the size of the edition. So it's only 30, 30 copies. Uh, and I don't believe Sahan wants to make a second edition at any point. Um, so this is I mean, I don't, yeah, it's been a whole, a whole process. Um, so we have 30 of them um, published by Portfront Press and they're currently being sold through Green Gallery um, in Wisconsin. Sahan and I also have copies that we've been selling directly uh, to libraries and individuals. Yes, uh, it's a, thank you for saying that. Like this book um, is also available in John uh, Flaxman library and also Columbia College, both in Chicago. So you can borrow it from there. And like also, as Amira said, like it's in Green Gallery and also you can contact us directly. Cool, uh, do we have any more questions? Ah, there we go. There's a question in the chat for you too. Yeah, um, well, I don't know why I think that the agent was interested in me. Like, uh, I really can't answer that. Um, like, I can just speculate or be a little sassy here. So I'm not going to answer that. But uh, like, I talked with SAIC admins. I asked the, uh, the security and also I had a meeting with International Affairs. Uh, I asked also because the interrogation was happened uh, in front of kind of near the entrance of the modern wing of AIC, uh, like Art Institute of Chicago. Uh, I asked them to give to see their footage and like show it to me. At least I can make a case or like. And at the time I was paranoid. Like I, for it took me about ten hours to understand like this really happened to me. Um, like I was like very like a. Uh, scared and I was like, I wanted to see it that this like happened. But uh, unfortunately it wasn't the angle of the surveillance camera, uh, but I, I, I communicated everything with uh, Lawrence Rodriguez, if I'm not making, like making mistake in international affairs. 
Um, and um, yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> All right, do we have any more questions? Well, I think we'll um, just wrap it up today. Um, thank you so much for joining today, everyone. Uh, before you go, we would like to announce the next open book program. Uh, Mana Contemporary in collaboration with the Near Foundation will be presenting, You'll Find It Where It Is, a reader by Sonia Thompson. We'll upload more information on our website very shortly, and then the, the conversation will take on April 14th, 11.30 Central. Well, thank you, thank you. everyone. Thank you.